Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're coming to the close of an amazing series on the cosmic conflict. Today, Earth's closing events. You need to be here. Get your Bible ready. We're going to study about things that are actually happening around us right now. Welcome to Hope Sabbath School and welcome to the team. Amen. Good to be together again. What a great series this has been, hasn't it? Amen. Showing the great battle in heaven and how it's impacting now planet Earth. So glad you're here. And I'm excited because Samuel is going to teach today on Earth's closing events, Samuel. We've got some remote team members. Faith, great to have you with us on our team today. And Shana, great to have you back, Shana. We're always happy to have our remote team members with us. We're happy that you're with us too, because you are an important part of what God is doing around the world through this global ministry. And I just want to share a few emails that have come to us recently. Meshach, good Bible name, <laughs> writes to us from Zambia. And Meshach says, Hello, Hope Sabbath School. Hello. Hey. I know they say that so you'll wave, right? <laughs> Greetings from Zambia. I'm always blessed by your presentations. Indeed, he writes, God is doing marvelous things in this end time where we're living. Amen. May God continue pouring his blessings upon you. Now, here's my request that you may pray that my faith Meshach's writing, my faith can grow more and more in the Lord God Almighty. Amen. I'm 23 years old. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. okay. And I want to walk with Jesus in my youth. Praise Amen. God. I'm getting excited. <laughs> Meshach, thank you for writing to us. There's, there's some 23-year-old who's saying, God, I want to be like that. Too. I want to be on fire for you. Amen. Amen. Here's a note from Marie on our YouTube. By the way, if you're a YouTuber, you can go to our YouTube channel. More than 100,000 subscribers now. And you can leave comments while you watch the program. That's what Marie did. She says, great job for God, Hope Sabbath School team. I've been watching for six years. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't been on YouTube for six <laughs> years, so you were probably watching on DirecTV or maybe on our website or on our app. But she says, I've been watching for six years. I was a Sunday worshiper, but since my daughter died, I became a Sabbath keeper. Mm -hmm. I thank God that I now know the truth about His Holy Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, I know, Marie, sounds like you are a follower of Jesus all along, but you learn some Bible truth, which is interesting, is very significant for Earth's closing events. Yes. Honoring God as our Creator. Amen. Amen. Isn't that exciting? Yes. Amen. Here is a note, handwritten note, from a donor in Maryland here in the United States. And the donor writes and says, Greetings to each one. I've been watching Hope Sabbath School for over 10 years. Wow. Mm. Wow. And it's been a great blessing to me. The interactive studies, the happy smiling faces of each team member, as well as their testimonies, have helped me studying the Bible. Amen. The lessons are explained in such a way that for an 83-year-old, <laughs> I now understand the Sabbath, what happens when we die, honoring God by returning my tithe. I just thank God for what He's doing Winning souls for His kingdom. Amen. Well, that's an 83-year-old woman of God who sent a gift of $50. Amen. And that may be a significant donation mm -hmm. to say, I want to be part of the miracle that yeah. God's doing. Thank you. You know who you are. And thank you to each one of you for being part of this great miracle. We're a donor-supported ministry. You can go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess, click on the little yellow donate button, or get the address, write a note to us, and thank you for your support. One last note from Trey. And Trey writes and says, I'm originally from Kenya, but now residing in Texas, and I'm 12 years old. <laughs> My mom and I found out about Hope Channel, and I love singing the scripture songs, <laughs> and also listening to God's Word. Thank you for what you're doing. May God bless you all. 
please say hi to Sabina and Travis. Well, <laughs> let everybody, let's, let's give Trey a wave, everybody. And uh, yeah, but he just wanted you to know he learned a few of the names. <laughs> uh, thanks for writing to us, everybody. And in fact, if you haven't written in a while, we'd love to hear from you. Write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. Do you see what an encouragement it is, not only to our team here, including our media team, but to Hope Sabbath School members around the world as they hear what God is doing in your life. Well, before we sing that theme song, Trey, because you're going to sing it with us, I know, we want to just remind you about that valuable resource. In fact, talking to our team teacher today, Samuel, he said that's really important to understand some of the things we're discussing today. Go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess, click on the free resource tab, and you can download a digital copy of a book that has impacted lives around the world. It's called The Great Controversy. It's about the cosmic conflict between good and evil, and it's timely if you want to know what's happening in Earth's closing events. It's available in more than 100 languages, so you can share it with friends who may say, well, I'd rather read in, in, uh, I'd rather read in French or I'd rather read in German. You can choose the language that you'd like to read and share that with others. Go to our website, get your copy, and you can get the theme song while you're there, but you say, Derek, we've already learned it, so <laughs> let's sing it together. Seek the Lord, while he may be found. You know, I was thinking that was written uh, 2,700 years ago, but it was never more true than today as we study about earth's closing events. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Samuel, why don't you lead us in prayer as we begin our study? Sure. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we thank you so much for this time. And God, now as we open your word, your inspired word, I pray, Father, that you would speak to us. Amen. Help us to seek you so that we may be found. Help us, Father, to be builded on your truth so that we may not be shaken no matter what comes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, we have been looking at this age-long war between God and Satan. And as we have seen, this is not a battle. It's not a battle of weapons, of you know, guns and tankers and missiles, but rather it is, it is not even a battle of force because Satan would not have a chance against God. <laughs> but instead, yeah. you know, <laughs> right. this is a battle of ideology and principles. Right. <laughs> this is a battle between two conflicting principles that each of them put forth. Mm -hmm. And so in this battle, there are certain weapons that God has access to that Satan doesn't, but there are certain weapons that Satan uses that God doesn't use. Mm -hmm. now, what are those weapons that Satan has that God doesn't use? Let's go to uh, John chapter 844. Jeffrey, if you could read that for us. Yes. John 844. I will be reading from the New King James Version. You are your father, the devil and the de desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar 
and the father of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what what do you think is devil's weapon that God doesn't use? Lies. 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 Sabina? Confusion. Deceit. Deceit. Lying. Mm -hmm. Lies. Uh, you know, trying to, as much as he can, get mm -hmm. people, just as you were saying, since it's a battle in, of ideology, mm -hmm. get people to side to his ideology, and usually it's the case that he can only do that by saying, uh, lies, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot really. You know, Sammy, you mentioned there's no violence, but actually, mm -hmm. he uses yeah. evil people yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to do violent things, mm -hmm. to kill people. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, murderer, mm -hmm. that, that's a violent word. That's mm -hmm. right. Yes. Yeah. Force, yeah. Mm -hmm. violence, as well as deceit mm -hmm. are, yeah. are, are the, the weapons he yeah. uses. Yeah. yeah. Right. And Travis. I was just to say what Derek said. Yeah. You know, I agree with that. That, mm -hmm. that force is, coercion is also something mm -hmm. yeah. that he uses as a weapon. Yeah. yeah, he uses force. He uses lies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see any connection with the fact that Jesus says he's a liar and a murderer from the beginning? Is there any connection that you see between his lies and murder? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes, uh, uh, Scott. Scott. God. Yeah. yeah, you know... Um, the whole reason for lies is to coerce somebody into something, right? The whole reason for murder oftentimes is an angry reaction when somebody doesn't do what you want them to do. It's all about power and control. And, you know, Satan has used whatever he has chosen to use in a way to try to coerce as many people as possible. And I, Sabina? Yes, and also I think you were asking how do we see that from the beginning in Scripture, and I immediately was led to the chapter, the third chapter in the Bible mm -hmm. in Genesis, where we learn that out of the work of Satan, he deceived our, you know, first parents, Adam and Eve, and through this work of deceit, he also led them into death, mm. right? Like their their choices, they were influenced by Satan's work and lies. Mm -hmm eventually get them not only to be quote-unquote murdered, but even ourselves to inherit that sinful nature from them, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's an excellent point. And Shayna? Mm -hmm. Sabina just reiterated exactly what I was thinking. Um, his lies from the beginning, it's essentially instituted the first murder because he was the one who coerced them into believing that what God was telling them was not true. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Bible also tells us that the wages of sin is death mm -hmm. and Eve's and Adam's actions led to our fall and death. Yeah. Isn't it interesting, uh, Samuel, that uh, Cain mm -hmm. doesn't simply say, well, I don't like you, Abel, because you do different things, so I'm not going to spend time with you anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he kills his brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So... When Satan takes control of a person's thoughts, it, it's not for anything mild-mannered. It, mm -hmm. It's for violence, for evil, uh, for deceit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can only imagine Adam and Eve, you've talked about them experiencing death, but how must they have felt? Mm -hmm. when one of their sons yeah. killed their other son. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I think we see this powerful nature of Satan's lies. Mm -hmm. He lies about God, mm -hmm. and by lying about God, he ultimately murders us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what he's right. preparing us yes. to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he, he tells this lies about God, but thankful, mm -hmm. we are thankful because God doesn't lie to us. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. Right. It's always truth. Gladys, if you could read uh, John chapter 14 and verse 6. John chapter 14, mm -hmm. verse 6. I'm reading from the New International Version, mm -hmm. and he says, Jesus answer, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on one side, we have Satan lying to us about God. Mm -hmm. And then here, Jesus tells, you know, I am the truth. Mm -hmm. Did you notice he doesn't say, I have truth. Mm -hmm. He says, yeah. I am truth. Yeah. 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 He's the personification of everything that's true. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very important point for us to know. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the one who leads us to the Father, while Satan tries to uh, take us away from the Father by lying to us. Jesus, Amen. through the truth, He leads us to the Father. Amen. Jeffrey. Yes, and I, I think this is another great comparison of 
there, you cannot serve two masters. Mm. Mm-hmm. This, it's either corroding you mm. and destroying you or abundantly giving life and love and liberty and newness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there, you can't have both. Mm-hmm. That, that's very true. That's very true. And, you know, these are two options mm-hmm. with eternal consequence, mm-hmm. and eternal conse- consequence mm-hmm. of what we believe and do. Now, why does truth matter? Why does truth matter? Let's read John 8, 32. And Jason, if you could read that for us. All right. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Mm-hmm. John chapter 8, verse 32. And the Bible says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. The truth, it sets us free. Yes. Amen. Truth sets us free. Uh, Sabina. Yeah, and not only that, I think it makes a stark contrast contrast because just like Satan is called, you know, the murderer and the liar, mm. I also see here that Jesus, he is not only giving the light and the truth, but he also is the life, mm. which mm. is the exact opposite of, exactly. you know, one giving death, giving death and the other giving life. So when we look here and see that, yes, he will give us truth to the Bible and scripture, ultimately what he wants to give us is life. Exactly. So just like the devil wanted to deceive into death, mm-hmm. God wants to, you know, give li- give truth into life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And Jason, yeah. Well, yes, also by making us free, it sanctifies us. It mm. sets us apart for a holy purpose mm. to be able to work on God's side. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Yes. So um, the verse preceding uh, the one Jason read was, if you abide in my word, you're my disciples and you'll know the truth and the truth mm. will set you free. Mm-hmm. Um, for you to know the truth, you need to study the Word of God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you have the Word of God hid in your heart, mm-hmm. the Lord will teach you not to sin against Him. Amen. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I know this concept of truth, it's actually very, uh, it's a very interesting concept, at least in the culture that we live in today, because we see mm-hmm. people saying we live in a post-truth society, mm-hmm. you know. We, we live in this postmodern world where truth is not valued. Yeah. There's no mm-hmm. such thing as objective truth. Everything is subjective. Right. You know, mm-hmm. if you think that's true for you, that's truth right. for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's different for me. Yeah. Right. right? Mm-hmm. So where can we discover truth? Can we go by our feelings to discover truth? I heard a story from Travis that I would like for him to share to us and to everyone who's watching. Mm-hmm. I may have shared that story um, prior on one of the programs, but uh, I was a pilot. I am a pilot, and um, I was a VFR pilot, which means I could only fly in good weather, Mm. where you can see out the windshield of the airplane. And so I was flying into Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I flew into some bad weather. And I remember flying into the bad um, bad weather, and I had called for a special so that I would have permission to fly below the clouds, but I couldn't get low enough. I flew into this whiteout. Mm. I have my aunt and uncle in the plane. And most VFR pilots who fly into bad weather end up dead. Mm. Matter of fact, my instructor told me, don't do it because you will die. Mm. Mm. But if it ever happened, she says, trust your instruments. Do not trust your feelings. If you trust your feelings, you will die. Mm. Mm. So I remember flying in there and my aunt and uncle mm. said, what should we do? And I said, you need to pray. Mm. And her words kept echoing in my head, trust your instruments. And I remember turning the plane gently, getting away from the ground. And I knew it was good where I just come from. So I turned around 180 degrees, just kept slowly coming away from the ground. Mm. When I rolled out of the turn, it felt like we were upside down. Mm. Even my uncle said, he said, it feels like we're going down. And I said, we, and I was talking him through this. I said, we, mm. the, the attitude indicator says we're flying level. The heading indicator says we're flying straight. We must trust our instruments or this <laughs> thing will crash. Yeah. Mm. I, was, I was convincing myself of that while yeah. I am flying mm. because wow. It did feel like we were crashing. Mm. Mm. And I remember it seemed like an hour, but we finally, but it was just a few minutes. We broke free. My heart was pounding. My legs were shaking. But that was one of the most valuable life lessons I learned. Mm. We must Mm. trust the instruments, Mm. even when it feels like we are spinning out of control. Thanks for sharing that. And that's a very important illustration for us. Mm. We cannot trust our Mm. feelings. We must trust something that's outside of us. What is that something that's outside of us? What is that source of truth that we must trust? Um, Faith, if you could read John 17 and verse 17 for us. I'm reading from the New King James Version. 
focus is John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Bible is very clear. The source of truth is God's word. Mm -hmm. Earlier we read Jesus telling, I am the truth. And here Jesus himself says, mm -hmm. God's word is truth. In Amen. other words, God's word tells us, about who God is, mm -hmm. His character, so mm -hmm. that we can be liberated, we can be free from the lies of mm -hmm. Satan. Mm -hmm. And I want to read one more verse. Uh, actually, it's in Psalm chapter 119, and I'll ask Nancy if you could read that for us. Psalm 119, verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Mm -hmm. hey. God's word is what? A, a, lamp. Lamp. a lamp to our feet, light, yes. light to our path. Mm -hmm. And you know, in this dark world filled mm -hmm. with lies of the devil, mm -hmm. we need the lamp of God's word to safely navigate. Amen. And God has given that so that we can have life, mm -hmm. eternal yeah. life and not be deceived. Yeah. You know, in this... Uh, there's this quote from the book, uh, Great Controversy. And again, I uh, just want our viewers to know that if you want this book, please go to uh, our uh, website and you can get our free resource. Mm -hmm. In this book, in page 593, we find this following quotation. It says, None but those who have fortified the mind with the truths of the Bible will stand through the last great conflict. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful, powerful quote. Mm -hmm. But I want us to think about this. You know, Ellen White, she's a prolific author with divine foresight. She says that only those who have fortified their minds mm -hmm. with the truths of the Bible mm -hmm. will stand through the last great conflict. Mm -hmm. Think about what it means to be fortified. W when we mm -hmm. think about a fort, what comes to your mind? Shayna. So a fort is essentially um, uh, a type of defense that is built to protect you from whatever attacks may come. And hearing this quote reminds me of some a quote or like a little sentence that I once heard that um, you don't need to know all the counterfeits. You just need to know what the real thing is mm -hmm. and you'll be able to determine all the counterfeits. Mm -hmm. um, in a battle or when using money or, or just in any situation. And so um, individuals can can spend a lot of time trying to figure out what is fake, what is fake, what is fake. And it, it just, it's not necessarily as enhancing as if you were just grounded and centered in knowing what the real truth is and you're yeah. well-versed mm -hmm. in the truth. Mm -hmm. Once you know that, and anything else that's not the truth, mm. you'll really be able to to mm -hmm. defend yourself right, against right. it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So we must know the truth in order to detect what the counterfeit is. Counterfeit is. I mean, there are plenty of counterfeits. <coughs> if we spend our tra time trying to look at all the count counterfeits, we just wouldn't have any time for truth. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we go to the truth, we read the truth, so that when the counterfeit comes, Okay, this doesn't match with what the Bible actually says, mm -hmm. so it's actually not true. Mm -hmm. Scott. You know, as you were reading that quote, it made me think of the story that Travis just told. Mm -hmm. Imagine right. when he was flying into, into that bad weather, imagine if his instructor had never told him mm -hmm. to trust his instruments. Mm -hmm. right. You know, he, he, would've, he would've crashed because his, his feeling, his body was telling him he was upside down and he needed to go right. the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. But because he had already had the instruction, he was able mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. That's why it says for us, um, none that, but those who can fortify the mind will stand because we need to, before that happens, mm -hmm. we need to already be, know what the Bible teaches us so that yeah. when we're in that stress, we can mm -hmm. know how to respond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we must study the truth. We must understand the truth mm -hmm. so that we can detect the counterfeit. I know a lot of comments, but let's, uh, <laughs> yeah. we need to keep moving on. So let's, um, if I can ask Sabina, if you could read Revelation 7 verses 1, 2, and 3. You know, this quote talks about this last great conflict. Mm -hmm. What is this last great conflict? Sabina, if you could read Revelation 7, 1, 2, 3. Yes, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And Revelation 7, 1, 2, 3 says, 
After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Hey. Mm -hmm. There's, there are a lot of symbols here, and we'll unpack them one by one. Okay. Now, first it says that there are four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, some people, they take this verse, it says, oh, Bible tells four corners, therefore the earth must be flat. <laughs> but that's not what this verse is talking about. In Bible prophecy, four always refers to universality mm -hmm. or totality. That's what four symbolizes. And so, Bible tells us that the, there are four angels who are covering the entire earth. And what are they doing? What does this verse say? Mm. Holding, holding back the winds Nancy? of strife. They're holding back the winds of strife. They're holding back the four winds so that it doesn't harm the earth, sea, or the trees. Mm -hmm. Now, what does winds indicate? Mm. Gladys, what, do, what does the winds indicate? Um, I think that the winds in indicates it can be doctrines, mm -hmm. it can be uh, mm -hmm. think uh, different um, mm -hmm. thoughts and mm -hmm. uh, doctrines. Yeah, you no know, Bible certainly talks about winds of doctrines. Mm -hmm. I There's think also in prophecy, the winds is also like uh, conflict. Conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. like they're literally holding back the conflict mm -hmm. because we're almost finish yeah, with this right. cosmic conflict. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but there needs to be the seal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So before the sealing happens, or in, because the sealing needs to yet happen, the angels are holding back the winds. Mm -hmm. They're holding back the destructive forces mm -hmm. so that God's servants mm -hmm. can be sealed. Mm -hmm. Now, this is powerful. What does the sealing mean? What is the seal? Who places the seal and who will actually receive the seal? Mm -hmm. These are some questions that we are going to answer. And to begin with, I'm going to ask uh, Faith to read Ephesians 4 and verse 30. It answers, Apostle Paul answers some of her questions. Ephesians 4 and verse 30. I'm reading from Ephesians 4, verses 30. This is the New King James Version. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Okay, mm. so who places the seal? The Holy Spirit of the, God. The Holy Spirit of yeah. God. You know, many people believe that the Holy Spirit himself is the seal, but no, the Bible tells the Holy Spirit is the one who places the seal. Yes. Who places the seal. Now, what does, it, what does the seal mean? You know, what, what is a seal? What is a seal? Yes, Gladys? Well, I think that a seal, like, is a stamp of authority. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, it marks that the ownership of someone or, or, or something. Mm -hmm. So, when uh, God puts a seal, it has to be something that marks that we belong to Him. Mm -hmm. And we are going to discover that. Exactly. And so, you know, uh, Paul is writing from the first century uh, Roman context. Mm -hmm. In those times, the masters would seal their servants mm -hmm. so they know that they belong, belong to, to them. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit seals us. Mm -hmm. Another function of a seal was that, you know, when you have an official document, mm -hmm. The, the, one, the one who is in authority, they seal the document. Right. Mm -hmm. And that seal indicates that that document right. is authentic. Mm -hmm. It's authentic. The seal has two functions. Mm -hmm. who, who it belongs or who they belong, it authenticates mm -hmm. whatever that piece of document is. Mm -hmm. Now, this verse has something like a very interesting uh, idea. It says, you know, by whom you were sealed. Mm -hmm. So, when does the Holy Spirit seal someone? Mm -hmm. When does the Holy Spirit seal someone? Because mm -hmm. this verse, it's talking about an event that has already happened. It's talking about a past event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Paul is writing to the Ephesian believers and he's saying that you were sealed by the Holy Spirit. He's telling that it, it, it he indicates that it already took place. Mm -hmm. Now, when were they sealed? 
See, when they accept Christ, mm -hmm. they were sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Bible actually talks about two seals. Mm -hmm. When they accept Christ, they are already sealed. When we accept Christ, we are already sealed. Mm -hmm. We now belong to Him. Yes. Amen. But this seal that Revelation talks about mm -hmm. is different than the first one. Mm -hmm. The re mm -hmm. seal that Revelation talks about, it talks about this end time apocalyptic seal. Yes. Travis. <clears throat> I just want to bring, a port, I believe, an important point about a seal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Depending on who stamped that, mm -hmm. that would have authority in, in certain jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. What I mean, if it was the king of Rome who sealed it and then it was in a different country, the seal wouldn't be recognized. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's important to remember that all authority was given to Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. All authority. So when he puts his seal on, it is global mm -hmm. authority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, universal. universal. This is universal. Yeah, <laughs> universal authority. This mm -hmm. isn't just some kingly seal. This is the seal of the living God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which means when he seals every believer, when someone messes with us, it's they're treading on dangerous territory. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we belong to the living God. Amen. 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 And that's a powerful thought for us to live in. Mm -hmm. right. And one cannot receive this end time apocalyptic seal that Revelation talks about yes. without first being sealed mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. God cannot authenticate something that He does not possess. Mm -hmm. oh. So we must first receive the seal of God on us first. Yes. In our personal lives, when we accept Christ, we now belong to Him yes. mm -hmm. and then at the end times, just before the last great conflict, mm -hmm. He seals us again. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. The seal of His authentication. Amen. Now, it's interesting, you know, all of these concepts of sealing, all of these things are good for us to know. But the most important question is, how do we get the seal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. one thing to know, but yes. it's another thing to receive. How yeah. do we receive the seal of God? Nancy, if you could read John 14, verses 15 through 17. If you know me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit is truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Mm. Okay, yeah. so who rec will receive the seal of God according to this verse? Mm. Nancy, those, who yeah. those, yes, those who love Him, who accept yes. Him. Those who love Him and keep His commandments, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will go and He will dwell in them. Mm -hmm. That is the seal. They are the ones who will receive the seal. Jason. Yeah, it's all about not so much how much you know, but who you know mm -hmm. in dealing with the situation. So you can have all the head knowledge, though, but the heart knowledge is the most important, mm -hmm. you know, in the sealing process. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And, uh, you know, and when we look at a seal, a seal contains three things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to first now identify what mm -hmm. is the seal that the Bible talks about. And a seal, it contains, usually contains three things. Mm -hmm. Name, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. title, and the territory. Mm -hmm. okay. Name, title, and territory. Where in the Bible do we see all of these three come together? Mm -hmm. Shana, if you could read Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Mm. Amen. Thank you. So, in this verse, we find all three elements mm -hmm. that are found in a seal. Mm -hmm. And here we find the name of God. Mm -hmm. It says, Lord your God. We find his title. Mm -hmm. He's the creator. Mm -hmm. He's the one who made everything. Mm -hmm. And the territory, earth, sea, and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the Sabbath is actually the seal of God that he places upon those 
who obey his commandments, which includes the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's think about that for a minute. When we keep the Sabbath, what does it imply? <laughs> that we love Him okay. and recognize Him as our Creator. Mm -hmm. Even in Ezekiel chapter 20, it mm -hmm. says that it's a sign yep. mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. them and me that they know that I'm the Lord who sanctifies us. Yeah. He's got us, and because He's got us, we trust Him and honor His Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Yes, and Gladys. Yes, when we keep the Sabbath, we enter into the covenant with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying about the documents, we declare to the world that we belong to Him. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, we belong to Him. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an acknowledgement that He is our Creator. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we love Him. Jeffrey. Yes, I also like to mention it's a redemptive mm -hmm. symbol where we rest in His works mm -hmm. that He has done mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are reminded by that. And that's, that's, the powerful. that's powerful. That's mm -hmm. powerful. Because, you know, many times, People think that, oh, Sabbath, oh, you're, you're, so you believe you are saved by works. No, no. no. Mm -hmm. Sabbath is, we are not working on Sabbath, we are resting on Sabbath because Jesus did all the work for us. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm coming back to Revelation 14, 1, where it said they had their Father's name mm -hmm. on their forehead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just want to affirm that it's the saving relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. that is manifested in a desire, mm. a, a love for Him and a desire to keep His commandments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there were people that that legally observed Sabbath who killed the Messiah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are not saved by the observance of any commandment. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're saved by faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. But when we recognize uh, that He's our Creator and our Redeemer, and that this is a sign of loyalty to Him, we want to do that Amen. Yeah. Yes. as a witness to the world. Exactly. But I just want to make sure that's clear because a person could legally comply with something mm -hmm. and Jesus could say, I never knew you. Yeah. Yes. I don't know who yes. you are. Yeah. Exactly. And we yes. see that a lot throughout Jesus' life when he was on this earth. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. The ones who conspired and persecuted Jesus were those who said, you know, we keep the Sabbath, mm -hmm. you know, we keep the law, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they did not know the person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's important for us to know the person because when we know the person, we will automatically do right. what, you know, what is pleasing to them. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus says, if you love me, keep mm -hmm. my commandments. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, uh, we do not keep the commandments to earn the love of God. We keep the commandments because we love yeah. God, mm -hmm. because yeah. we love God. Now, if we go to Revelation 14 and verse 6 through 7, and I'll ask Tendi if you could read that for us. Revelation 14 verses 6 through 7. We see this truth reaffirmed in a different way. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, and it reads, Then I saw another angel flying overhead, with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and the springs of water. Mm. Hey, mm. so you know, here we find three imperatives. Fear God, give Him glory, and worship Him mm -hmm. who made heavens, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is the Creator, and we are to worship the Creator. And the Sabbath is a sign, it's a, it's a memorial of mm -hmm. His creative act. And so when we rest on the Sabbath, we are essentially saying, God, you are the Lord of my life. Amen. You are the one who created me. I did not evolve, but you created me. Mm -hmm. And I honor you by doing that on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And if you notice the last part of uh, Revelation 14 and verse 7, where it says, worship him who made. One scholar noted that that is actually an allusion to the Sabbath commandment in Revelation 20, verse 11. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so, Exodus 20. Yeah, sorry, Exodus, Exodus 20. 20. And so, and so, you know, Apostle John, he's essentially quoting the Sabbath commandment mm. Mm. in giving us a warning to this world and saying, hey, you need to remember the Sabbath here. Amen. Amen. Mm. Now, but when we look at the world, the majority of the world, sadly, many of our Christian brothers and sisters have often ignored, neglected, 
or have been kept in dark right. by the lies of Satan mm. <laughs> regarding the truth about the Sabbath. Don't we? Mm. Yeah. No? We all know friends, people, mm -hmm. maybe relatives right. who do not know this truth. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this great controversy in this cosmic conflict there are Satan always produces a counterfeit and the counterfeit is never too far apart from the truth. It's always so close mm -hmm. to the truth. And we find in, the, uh, find in Revelation that Satan, he actually has his own mark mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he puts on the people, mark of the beast. What is this mark of the beast? I'll ask Gladys if you could read Revelation 13 verses 16 and 17. And he reads, it also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. Okay, mm -hmm. so we see here that Satan himself, he also has a counterfeit that he mm -hmm. places upon people, mm -hmm. mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. On one side, we have the seal of God. On, on the other side, we have mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Now, if the seal of God is the true Sabbath, what would the mark of the beast be? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Travis. Well, one thing I think is really important is to know who the beast is. Mm -hmm. Many search for the mark of the beast and you don't know who the beast is. Mm -hmm. But uh, through our study mm -hmm. here on Hope Sabbath School, uh, we've discovered that the beast in the book of Revelation that we're talking about is the Christian church mm -hmm. um, of old. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, they've, they've set aside the Sabbath mm -hmm. back in the fourth century and, uh, and, and placed Sunday, mm. uh, which was originally a day of sun worship. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, it's, a matter of fact, there's many places where we could find that it, they've claimed it's their ecclesiastical authority mm -hmm. um, because they believe they have authority over the scriptures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, deluded by Satan, mm -hmm. they have placed this counterfeit Sabbath, mm -hmm. Sunday mm -hmm. worship, and that is the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to emphasize yeah. back to the Reformation. Mm -hmm. There were many people who worship God every Sunday. Mm -hmm. They didn't know about the Sabbath yeah. and they'll be saved by His Amen. grace yeah. yes. through faith in Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what happens in this earth's closing events is people will understand the significance of honoring God through His Sabbath. Yeah. There are many devoted followers of Jesus yep. Who, who don't know or have not come to that conviction yet. Mm. And I know later we'll read the incredible invitation come out of her, my people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. my people exactly. saved by grace through faith, mm -hmm. who will suddenly say, I understand now that it's not just kind of an optional choice or a following a tradition just because it's been done for many generations. Mm -hmm. But but it's what God asked me to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so thankful that we have brothers and sisters in Christ who will who love Jesus with yes. their whole hearts, mm -hmm. who will say, Oh, now I understand the significance of the Sabbath and the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Amen. And you know, why does God give us these truths that you know, are difficult for some people and maybe uncomfortable. It's because God loves us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, He's gracious. He wants to save us. And that is precisely the reason why God tells, you know, these messages. He gives us these messages out of love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to be lost. Yeah. He doesn't want to, us to believe the lies of Satan. He wants us to know the truth so that we can have that eternal life. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to move on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's another thing that we find that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. The seal of God is placed on the forehead, but the mark of the beast is placed on both the forehead and on the right hand. Or, or, or one. Or, or, yeah, it could be or, either one, right? Yeah. And so what does that imply, Gladys? Well, I think that the, the, the mark of the beast can mm -hmm. be either on the forehead or on the hand because some people are, like Pastor Derek just said, convicted. Mm -hmm. They don't, they, that's the truth that they know. Mm -hmm. So they're convicted in their minds that that, um, you know, that that's the day of worship. Mm -hmm. But other people do it out of convenience, mm -hmm. the work of their hands, in their jobs, mm -hmm. you know, something that um, they can, you know, I just, I believe that the Sabbath is the day of worship, but you know, 
I don't want to quit my job. So they do it at a convenience. Mm -hmm. But what the seal of God can only be a conviction. You have to be <laughs> certain mm -hmm. that God is your creator mm -hmm. and that you belong to him. There is no convenience with God. It yeah. has to be a conviction. It has to be a conviction. Yeah. It mm -hmm. has to be a conviction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we think about, you know, the mark of the beast and the seal of God, and especially think, you know, we have been talking about the mark of the beast. And maybe some of you who are listening, you're thinking, you know, this is all very new to me i do not know anything about this again we want you to go and please get the free offer book and read that in your language and you will know much more about what we are talking about if you want to learn more mm -hmm. and also maybe you know some of our you know friends who are listening they may be so do i have the mark of the beast mm -hmm. now <laughs> because you know I, I worship on sunday so do i have the mark of the beast can i never receive the seal of god am i lost what would your answer be? Yeah, as we read in Revelation uh, chapter 13, verse 16 and 17, we saw that it's not the mark of the peace, excuse me, mark of the beast until it's actually forced upon the people. Mm -hmm. Then it would be such. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have been looking at the seal of God, the mark of the beast, and we have identified what they are. Mm -hmm. How can we be ready for what is going to happen? You know, these are going to be times mm -hmm. that are testing. There'll be persecutions, as we saw in our last lesson, mm -hmm. persecutions, trials that God's people will go through. How can we be ready? And also, more importantly, how can we get others to be ready for what's coming? Mm -hmm. Does God promise something in scriptures? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does God promise something in scriptures? We certainly find God's promise. God promised in the Bible that He is going to perform one of the greatest manifestations mm -hmm. of His presence in this world. Mm -hmm. Come, let's read about it in Joel chapter 2, verses 21 and 24. And Tendi, if you could read that for us. Joel chapter 2, verses 21 through 24. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, Joel chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Fear not, you beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit, the fig tree and the vine give their full yield. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. Mm -hmm. He has poured down for you abundant rain. Mm -hmm. That he has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. Mm -hmm. The threshing floors shall be full of grain and the vast shall overflow with wine and oil. Mm. Thank you for reading that for us. So these passages tell her, tells us about something that God is going to do. Mm -hmm. He says that he is going to pour down the early and the latter rain. Mm -hmm. Now, what is this metaphor of early rain and latter rain? Mm -hmm. Nancy. It has to do with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to read, if, if it's okay, mm -hmm. a couple of verses beyond what we had read, and it's in Joel 2, mm -hmm. um, verses 30 through 32, mm -hmm. if that's okay. Yeah. Um, and I'll read, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we know that this is going to happen at the very end because it talks about um, these signs that happen at the end of time. Mm -hmm. And um, we know that the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth and that when we call upon the name of the Lord, we will be saved. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the keeping of God's commandments, as he says, if you love me, keep my commandments is key because that's how we show our love for someone by doing what they ask us to do. Amen. 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 Yeah. yeah. I was hoping uh, that Nancy would read verses 28 and 29. Yeah. 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 And, and maybe someone could read that yeah. because uh, we're thinking that the rain is the Holy Spirit, but mm -hmm. actually Joel tells us mm -hmm 
And the, what exactly? the Apostle Peter quotes him in yeah. the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So maybe someone could read yeah. Joel 2, 28 and 29. And Shana, if you, can, if you can read that for us. Yes, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Mm -hmm. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Mm -hmm. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Amen. 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 This is powerful. <laughs> yes. you know, God says, I will pour the yeah. early rain and latter rain. And here he says, I will pour my spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so they are one and the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the Hebrew, uh, you know, agricultural cycle, the early rain came on the fall so that the seeds could germinate. Mm -hmm. And the latter rain came in the spring so that the har it can ripen the harvest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at Christian history, mm -hmm. has there ever been a time where the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church? Mm -hmm. Do we recall any events? Yeah, mm -hmm. Scott. Yeah, I'm thinking of um, shortly after Jesus ascended to heaven, the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter um, 1 and 2, mm. um, where Jesus had told the disciples to get, stay there in Jerusalem until the pouring of the, of the Holy Spirit came yeah. out. And so they, they were all gathered together, 120 of them, praying and seeking God's guidance. And then God came and poured out the Spirit massively. And that was the whole beginning of the church mm -hmm. as, as the power just came in an unbelievable way. Amen. And it's powerful. And if you, if, you, uh, if you don't mind, if you could read actually Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 and verses 14 through 18. Mm -hmm. All right, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Um, it says, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm -hmm. And in verse 14, But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Mm -hmm. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Amen. 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 Powerful verse yeah. Yeah. and powerful incident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this chapter, we read that 3,000 were baptized in one day. <laughs> yes. Amen. That's what the outpouring of the Holy Spirit does. Mm -hmm. People join the church mm -hmm. in great numbers. Mm -hmm. And God wants to do something in a much more grander scale. I mean, imagine mm -hmm. much more grander scale in these last days. Amen. Jeffrey, if you could read Revelation 18 verses 1 through 4. Revelation 18, 1 through 8. 1 through 4. 1 through 4. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. After these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with its glory. And he cried mightily, mightily, with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and it has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. Mm -hmm. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Mm -hmm. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This is God's final message right. to this planet. Mm -hmm. And God, through His people, will take this message to all the world. Mm -hmm. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, all the world 
will be lightened by God's glory. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Amen. And God wants to do that through each one of us, Amen. through each one of you who are listening. God wants to use you to save the whole world, mm -hmm. to save the world near you. Maybe your friends, your families, your relatives. Mm -hmm. God wants to pour the latter rain. Amen. How can we be ready for that latter rain? And just, just one question that comes to my mind or one thought. Mm -hmm. And that is, we must have the early rain in our lives now Amen. Mm -hmm. so that we can receive the latter rain. Mm -hmm. And may, may all of us surrender to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. so that we can be used by Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much, Samuel. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful conclusion. And I, I love the message of the angel in Revelation 18 because some people might say, well, Am I part of God's people? He says, come out of confusion. That's mm -hmm. Babylon. My people. Mm -hmm. He's calling to us. And some of us have lived in confusion. Mm -hmm. But I'm so thankful for the patience and the mercy of God. Amen. And that loud call. And if we want to be hearing that call, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Mm -hmm. If we want to be sharing that appeal, we also need the Holy Spirit to be in us, working through us. Because when Jesus comes, mm -hmm. a vast multitude will welcome Him with joy. Amen. Let's pray by God's grace we're part of that number. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, thank you for reminding us in earth's closing events that we need the truth as it is in Jesus mm -hmm. and to follow Jesus wherever he leads us. Yes. I pray your spirit would be in us. Continue to lead us into truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. Don't forget that resource at our website. Continue to draw close to Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you day by day. And then, friend, go out and be a blessing to those around you.